everyone. It's Monday at the Mystical Magical Mansion. I am super excited to be sharing my kitchen with you today. And if this is the first time you're tuning into this channel, welcome. My name is Kim. My husband Ryan and I bought this beautiful old mansion built in 1910. And every week we share a little bit of our remodeling projects, our updating, all the things going on with our house, our family, and a little bit about the city of Omaha. So the best news that I can share with all of you is the kitchen is going to be, I wouldn't say demolished, but the remodeling project begins tomorrow morning. We've been waiting for this for two months now to start. We had anticipated it in midsummer, and we are now fall, but that's okay. We'll take it when we can get it. So tomorrow morning, they'll be coming in and removing everything that you see here. We will be leaving the walls intact. We're not changing anything with the structure. We're just doing a lot with the, um, the interior of the kitchen. So I showed you the blueprints for the kitchen uh, in the episode where we went through blueprints and kind of gave you a little bit of a, an overview of the kitchen. I think just to begin, it's lovely, it's okay, it's not the biggest room, it's not the smallest room, but it is one that needs to be, I feel like, for someone who cooks and bakes and needs a little counter space and room, just set up a little bit differently. So that is my plan. I'm gonna give you a little tour today of how the kitchen looks now so you have a really good before and kind of an idea of what we're starting from and where we're starting from. So. This is in the west side of the house, would be sort of the northwest corner of the house, and it was set up as a servant's kitchen. So this house was built in 1910 by Ephraim Dixon, and you may see in historical record the house being referred to as the Dixon House. So it is in the Gold Coast neighborhood of Omaha, which was very affluent at the time, and sat up on a hill far from the rest of the city, and they had servants, helpers, people cooking and cleaning and taking care of children and all those things. So the house was set up specifically so the kitchen could be separate from the rest of everything else. There were doors closing it off so no one, um, the, the family members, would not see any cooking, cleaning, prep, or any of those kind of things. There's actually a separate servant's entrance, which I'll show you. Um, a space that used to be a pantry, a servant's kitchen, and then as you'll see where that little arch door is, that's the um, butler's pantry which goes into the dining room. And then this is the original kitchen plan and as you can see there was a servant's dining room and a kitchen porch which have been modified a little bit at this point but you can see between everything there's a door. There are so many doors. You can see these little angles where there is just a swing and another door and another door and another door. Um, like to keep all of these doors and rooms very, very separate, clearly. Then there was a door here that goes between the kitchen and the servant's hallway, which has been taken out. Um, there was also a door that was for going into the kitchen that's now no longer there. Then the swinging door coming this way into the dining room that we do still have, so we feel very lucky about that. But yeah, you can see that the place for the help was very separate from the owners and I'm sure out on this little kitchen porch out here, they sat out there and smoked cigarettes and talked about life problems. I'm sure it was very Downton Abbey. So this room is not a tiny room, but it is not big. And um, back in those days, the more rooms you had and the more separate and sort of specific they were to purpose was actually the, the more um, fancy your house was. And so we've sort of flipped that um, in this current day and age. We love everything open and the whole open concept. This kitchen is um, sort of split in half by a big island, which you can see behind me, which is long. And there's a dishwasher, a sink, some drawers in it, and then kind of a narrow bar area um, in the top. So if we look at the bar from this side, you can see I am five, four, five, five-ish maybe, and it comes up to my shoulder. So when you go to sit at it, it is extremely tall. Um, it does sort of do the trick of blocking any view coming into the kitchen of cooking or anything that's going on the counter. But if you wanna have people come and sit at the bar or the center island or anything, it's really, it's, it's a bit too tall at this point. And we'll just start at the very back door. 
So this is the back door to the house that comes in from the carriage house. This door did not exist originally. This was would have been a window. And this was put in by the Dowell family probably in the 40s or 50s. And so as we come in, we're gonna flip around and see the kitchen. So where we're standing just inside the door actually originally was a pantry area. So you can see sort of this arch line along the ceiling that was a wall this was enclosed there was a door and inside of this space we actually have our refrigerator and there's some cabinets built into the walls back here with some drawers you can see for storage but this area actually was a pantry so there would have been you know, obviously places to keep food because that's what a pantry is for and at some point this was remodeled and changed just sort of into a little cove and a little storage area so as we pan around and we look into the kitchen and again here's the side of the island and yes our kitchen is a little mess we've got 90 percent of things out of here at the current moment but we still have just a little bit to go we have to have it all ready because they're going to pull everything out tomorrow morning so as we walk this way you can see that there is a cabinet in the wall so there's the door going into the butler's pantry and here is a cabinet so along this wall so this is just the wall on the east side of the kitchen there was the sink and some cabinets. At some point that was changed and this cabinet was sort of built into the wall so that there was more of a walkway space through here. And so you can see that this cabinet actually goes straight through into the butler's pantry. So this wall would have been closed probably to about here. And then again, cabinets and all the things on this wall. So we're actually closing this back up. We're taking it to the original footprint and plan for the kitchen. So there will be dishwasher, sink, um, microwave here, cabinets going all the way up this wall, which this is a very high kitchen. And then this will be really just a usable space. This big island that I'm standing and filming from will be made much, much smaller. So we just want to make this more of a, a pass-through space here, and then the island smaller, one level, so it's all really just counter space and storage for so this would be the servants entrance just outside the door here. This is the place where the servants would have come in. They would have, um, there was only a two side doors and one front door. This back door that I showed you didn't exist. So this is where they would have come in to come to work, to show up. And again, all those areas had doors and places keeping them very private and separate from the living quarters of the family. Um, the door behind me is just sort of a little pass through. So I know I kind of pointed out on the blueprints before, but there are a million doors. There's a door to get into the kitchen. As we come through this little hall, there's a door to get out to the servant's porch. There's actually just a little enclosed porch, which used to be open. So if we close this door, there's some cabinets here. And inside of them, it's just some storage, some hooks for coats and things like that. And like I said, we've had to clear all of this out. So it's been a bit of a blustery weekend. Um, and then this comes into the servant's dining room. And so this is just a small room. Sorry, there's kind of had moved some stuff out here. So that's sort of, currently it's right now just an apartment for our dog. So it would have just been big enough for a dining room table to be in here. We had racks and, um, there's my little dog, Dixie, uh, racks and storage, and we made this into a great big pantry. So I'm gonna be doing a little painting in here, judging this room up and then we'll be redoing flooring. So that's why we have it all cleared out is because they'll be pulling up this flooring and putting up new and it'll be really cute. So you're seeing the before, worst case scenario. Yes, that little window covering looks kind of janky, but that's okay. This is reality TV today. And then here is the door to the back, out to the back porch that would have been the entrance to the, um, the servant's entrance in the servant's porch. So I will tell you that I'm going to open this. This is the original screen door that would have been on here. So this thing is, I believe, to be super old and huge, very, very big and intact. Um, and then as we come out here, so this would have been the entrance that the servants would have come in. And you can see there's a sidewalk out there that leads out to the street. So these doors were added much later. Um, and then this, we've just got a bunch of stuff stored in here for right now while we're getting everything organized before we start. So it's got the beadboard ceiling, some nice windows. There's no way to open these windows, so there's not much ventilation out here, so, and it is not insulated. 
I will tell you that this winter, this area gets really cold and the kitchen gets super cold. So what we're planning to do is to take that big brown door, the exterior door, and because this room isn't insulated and there, we're not planning to, we're gonna put that as the exterior door here. And then we're gonna put a more efficient interior door that looks old, but will hopefully keep this area of the house a little warmer this winter. We're gonna put it into this spot where this big um, servant store entrance is. And I'm sorry, they all just look like brown doors right now, but there's so many brown doors. <laughs> we have so many brown doors in such a small area. So hopefully that will help with the kitchen staying a little warmer. And then we put that mini split in, which some of you have seen that video, which is heating and, um, and air conditioning as well. So hopefully that will help with the room. There's just one single radiator in there and it, it was okay, but it certainly did not keep up with the cold this winter. So hopefully that will be a much, much better situation. So here's a look at the servant's entrance from the outside. So if we're walking up, there was a specific sidewalk that came from 38th Street and came up here and then there was a little set of steps and there's a sort of a decorative exterior door on there now, which is a narrow door and makes it really challenging to get anything in the house. Um, like standard size appliances or anything like that. So we're actually gonna be putting a little bit wider door reframing that space. But this would be the entrance that they would have taken to come to work and to come in and serve the household. So here's the view with the door open. Again, it's got that really beautiful beadboard ceiling. We'll be just doing some sort of zhuzhing up in this area. And then that's the screen door and the sort of back porch area from this angle. And you can see this, the original doorbell is still there. So there would have been a bell for the servants or someone to ring for the, from this side, but that has been disconnected. It does not um, ring anywhere, unfortunately. But it's cool that it's still there. And this is the view from the servants entrance then out to the street. So it's just a cute little walkway, a little secret garden back here. There's lots of ferns and bushes and um, it is really quite, quite pretty back here. So here's the view of the kitchen again, just a little bit different angle. So there will still be a stove and um, storage over on this wall. Behind that, there's actually a chimney. We do know that that is um, from the blueprints, goes all the way up the side of the house. And then there was actually a cook stove below it in the basement. And so there is, a chimney that goes all the way up to outside of the house. So we'll be putting a new vent in there and a vent hood and new cabinets. Um, if we look over here, you can see that there's that one radiator that I mentioned. So this is what the heat source is for this kitchen. And uh, it did an okay job, but not a great job. We have great big windows, which really have a beautiful view of our neighbor's historic home. And they have gorgeous trees in their backyard. They're so, so, so pretty. Just love their trees. So we have a sweet view, love that. And then it obviously goes into the butler's pantry. We will not be changing anything in the butler's pantry other than closing that space off and um, sealing up the, butch the cabinets so that they are separate. And I'll just come in here so you can kind of see that. And yes, it's a mess, people, this is real life. Um, so we've got those cabinets emptied out, all of the china and dishes and everything. Um, so that they can repair that wall and then seal that up. So if you look up, you can see that there's very high ceilings. We're planning to put two pendant lights hanging down over the new island. And then I'm also planning on adding a crown molding up here around the top of the ceiling, which I think this room just sort of is screaming for. And again, there's that little mini split that we added last fall. So I have been able to look at some old pictures of this kitchen from like the 50s and 60s. And because there's family in there and children, um, I'm not gonna share with you online, but it was such a treasure to get those. Um, but one of the things that happened when we were putting in the mini split is as they were coring out the, um, the holes through the wall to go up here, we discovered that this room, like many others, they had just skim coated with drywall mud over the top of wallpaper. And so this little bit of wallpaper ended up showing up, which was really surprising because when I looked at the wallpaper samples upstairs in the closet, I do have a roll of this exact, um, this exact print. And I think actually it's even one that I rolled out and said how much I love this suite. It's pink and green. And um, this pattern so much, um, 
it was one of the roles that I really liked and I thought it was probably in a bedroom or a bathroom but it was actually in the kitchen and in the old pictures probably halfway up the wall well two-thirds of the way up the wall I'll bet you there was white porcelain tile and then there was a ring well a, a row above that a band of black all the way around so I think that's very probably true to the style and it being a somewhat modern house in 1910 they really um, were doing in, doing a lot of really modern innovations like putting gas fireplaces in instead of wood burning um, I think they were really kind of up to the times as style wise in the house and um, I'm not sure when what year this this wallpaper would have put in but um, I don't know if it was originally in the kitchen and then someone put it because there's not a layer under it it doesn't look like it was stuck to something and maybe we'll discover something else as we're um, opening up some of these spaces and putting in some new lights and some new cabinets and things maybe we'll discover some new wallpaper pieces or bits or anything to give us some clues so while the kitchen remodel is going on which is supposed to take about two months huh, fingers crossed you know timelines are sort of like the weather they can change in a moment's notice but we have set up a makeshift, makeshift kitchen here in the sunroom so if you come over do not look at this room because it's not going to be the cutest thing but it's going to be very functional so we just have a table set up with a little burner thing microwave our air fryer we're going to just limp along with this little fake kitchen these are the racks that were in my pantry out on the servants porch that we've kind of moved a lot of our dishes and then you'll see back here shelves with more stuff and then we're going to be rolling the refrigerator refrigerator in here as well so as much as I'm not excited about this part, I'm excited to be getting this done. I really, I love to cook, I love to entertain, I love to bake, I love all those things, and I feel like right now that sort of isn't the greatest thing for me in this kitchen, so I'm excited to restore it, or take it back to its original footprint, but yet update it so it's super functional. It is not gonna be a show kitchen by any stretch of the imagination. It is going to be a very functional kitchen. All right. What so for those of you who haven't met my husband before, this is my husband, Ryan, my partner in crime. And I wanted to just bring him in to say hi to all of you and to also share just a little bit about um, our process when we bought the house. We loved everything about it, but both of us, when we got to this back part of the house, weren't crazy about the kitchen. No, from what we could see. Right, there was a lot of it that was covered. There was painting and work going on, so we didn't really have a good idea of what the flooring looked like, how it was really going to set up or flow. Um, there was, it was just a, a kind of a mystery, and so we actually sat down. Remember we took our sheet of paper and wrote down our list of pros and cons of the house, and the number one was the kitchen. Kitchen. Yeah, and so we until we got here and got moved in, which was just last year on this very week, um, did we really notice that one was for a left-handed person? <laughs> yeah, didn't know there was left-handed kitchens. <laughs> yeah, very left-handed setup, and um, there was really almost zero counter space. Like we didn't realize how and, how bad that. And was. for a baker, her to have no counter space to work dough or anything. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, there was also a big pot rack that was hanging from the ceiling and a big heavy pot rack. Yeah, and you being tall, it was right there. <laughs> it was right in his with pots. <laughs> There's pans in his face every time he came over to the sink. So and you had to be really good about balance, or else it. Yeah, it was, it was tricky. It was tricky. So we took the pot rack down and we've made the best of things. But we really were committed from the time we bought the house that the kitchen needed to be updated in a way to just make it more functional. So what are you excited about this kitchen project? You being excited about the kitchen. <laughs> Cause you don't like the kitchen now. You don't like to cook in it. It's your thing is to cook. And I would come home after work and hang out and play guitar and you would cook. And you don't do that anymore. Yeah. You don't spend time in here. Yeah. And we can't hang out in this kitchen. Yeah. I mean, if the countertop height is, I'm not exaggerating, I'm stepping back, that's where the countertops are at, yeah. which is not. I know for someone for like anybody. Me. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, even if I sit at that on a table, then you're like this. It's just, yeah. it's not a, a family-friendly kitchen to hang out in. Yeah. So, and I know families were raised, and families ate a lot in this kitchen before. And I think this setup, this island, might have been just a little bit different in the past that made that a little easier or something because. Um, like it probably wasn't this high, and yeah. the yeah. space to eat is. Yeah, the countertop is about maybe 10 there. inches. 
yeah, yeah. it's tiny yeah so we're going to be changing that up it'll be um just again restored back to the original footprint the original layout of the kitchen the plumbing and everything below it is actually set up for us so it should hopefully be super easy fingers crossed but i'm excited to do baking and cooking and then hopefully we can have thanksgiving here yeah we'll see yeah yeah so they say november 8th yeah hmm. we'll see because it's about so two and a half weeks we look at us now because if we are a little fuller it's because we had to eat out and order takeout food a lot Grab up. <laughs> in the next few weeks. So anyway, just be kind because that could definitely happen. So anyway, thanks for being on camera, babe. Sure, babe. Yeah. All right, everyone, wish us luck. It's going to be an adventure. I'll keep you guys all posted through the whole process. But um, updates and remodeling are challenging and fun and exciting and at the same time, they just make life a little more complicated for a bit. So um, I'll keep sharing progress and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And as always, we're gonna make a nice dinner here tonight. We're gonna bake in the oven our last um, our last meal made in this, this good old oven that's been here for quite some time and um, use our plates. And we're not gonna have a sink on this level to wash dishes in, so we'll be using paper plates for a bit. So. We're gonna do an unapologetically fancy dinner tonight because we need to. And I hope all of you are taking every opportunity you can to get out your good dishes, your fancy things, like those things that make you feel elegant or maybe that you're enjoying the finer things in life because I don't feel like anybody should put things off or save for good because we're not guaranteed a tomorrow. And doggone it, we deserve the good stuff. So you be unapologetically fancy. So take good care. I will see you next week and best wishes from the mystical, magical mansion.